Joint replacement is a fascinating area. Uh, why? Because, well, there's certainly demand for it. And when you've got uh, one million people expected to be over the age of 90 in Italy alone by the year 2026, you can see that uh, joint replacement has a bright future, especially in places like Japan, Europe, the United States. In fact, the United States has most of the market for joint replacement right now because uh, people are prosperous there and the markets are well developed. What can we expect in the future? Well, people have been replacing joints with, uh, uh, with all kinds of combinations of metal and plastic for a very long time. But these combinations often uh, uh, create problems. Firstly, they can wear out and secondly, they can move. It's well known that uh, hips often have to be revised if, uh, as that's the name for it, you cut the, the, uh, the neck off the, the, off, 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 the, off the top of the leg, the femur, uh, you insert uh, a thing with a, me a, 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 with a metal prong on it, which has a ball of, of uh, highly polished metal, and you cement it in place. And it should stay there. <laughs> the trouble is, for a start, the moment you do that, you change the stresses and strains on the bone around that joint, and you start getting absorption of bone. You see, bone only remains strong so long as it's stressed as everyone knows, has broken a bone. If you break a bone and it's fixed with a piece of steel, it'll take a lot longer to heal than uh, a naturally stressed bone that's broken that's just encased in plaster. Bone needs to be stressed to be healthy. And when you put this piece of steel in, the stresses change. So the bone will reform, you get absorption anyway, in some places you get extra growth in others, and that pin can move. Uh, the other reason it can move is just that simply it's driven down, 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 down by the pounding pressure. These hips were designed for older people who are less mobile. If you've got an athlete who's had a, a, a hip at the age of 50 put in, who's insisting on doing marathons every other week, that hip is likely to fail. And when it fails, you're going to have to come back, cut another chunk of bone on, and put another even longer pin in, into perhaps a thinner piece of bone, and then the cycle continues. And of course, each time it's revised, there are all the risks of infection and so on. And, uh, and other risks too that are associated with any large operation, anaesthetic risks, bed rest risks. So in order to try and overcome some of the limitations of hip operations, one of the latest techniques has been to cut much less bone off uh, in a smaller procedure to, uh, to preserve most of the neck of the top of the, of the leg um, and to put a cap on it um, so that if that then moves you can then go back to a more traditional uh, kind of joint replacement. Well, what about, uh, that's hips, but what about knees? Yes, we could do the same with knees. They look a bit clumsy from the outside, but the results are pretty good. But once again, they can move. We can replace the joints in the, in, in the shoulder. There are many, many joints we can replace to deal with one of the major problems of getting old, uh, which is osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. In fact, chronic pain and disability is one of the most overwhelming unmet medical needs of all those over the age of 65. It's almost universal at one point or another if people live as long as 75 or 80. But what could we do in the future? Could we actually regrow surfaces for people? The answer is yes. The technology is here. It's experimental, but more or less proven. Um, let's take the knee, for example. We know that we can take cartilage cells from your body. We can grow them in the laboratory. We can uh, create sheets of these cartilage cells on, on, a, on a polymer base, some kind of a a flexible membrane. We can cut open the knee, your knee. We can uh, rub the rough surfaces smooth, get rid of all the bits of overgrowth of rough bone which was caused by scarring and damage over many years. And we can create a nice smooth surface which is, um, which is a bit raw and ready to accept these new cells on both sides, the upper and lower sides of this joint. We can then put in this membrane and uh, close the knee. Now that knee will have to be immobilized for up to three months at the moment because that's how long it takes cartilage cells to completely regrow. But scientists are discovering that in many cases when you open up that knee after three months a miracle has happened. You seem to have a perfectly formed new clean surface of cartilage on both surfaces. Now it, on top, top and bottom. Now of course if the, the underlying rheumatoid disease has not been uh, dealt with, then it's likely that that surface will, can, will start to deteriorate once it's used and will wear away. But nevertheless, it could well be a jolly good fix for quite a number of years for someone who's been otherwise severely disabled and may be a very um, 
much better and more sustainable alternative, who knows, than, uh, than, than a plastic and metal surfaces being put in, in place instead. Now, could we regrow other surfaces? Yes, we can. The knee is ideal because it's, it's, uh, it's reasonably accessible. The hip is more difficult to, to prepare, but in theory it should be possible. It's also somehow more difficult to Im completely immobilize the hip joint against the rest of the body. It would require an enormous brace. The knee is relatively easy to just in case, or to, or to pin in some, or strap in some way. So we are going to see a lot more um, thought, creative interest in these techniques. And we're also going to see other uh, specialized processes that are designed to produce more rapid healing of ligaments and, uh, and, and all kinds of other structures around these joints. And I'm thinking about things like ultrasound, microwaves, um, all kinds of energy delivering things which will stimulate the growth of, uh, of blood vessels, uh, which will improve the, uh, the local circulation, accelerate healing time and so on. We will see uh, the evolution of new tissue stimulators. Uh, these are chemicals which are produced naturally in the body in response to injury, which encourage cells to, um, to proliferate and repair. And uh, we'll find ways to get better stimulants into the right places at the right time.